Uh, I've been doing a number of YouTube videos on Git, and I plan on doing more, but a few people have commented on my prompt. I've got a prompt that looks like this in my PowerShell on Windows. It's kind of cool. It's using a thing called Powerline Fonts, along with Posh Git and Oh My Posh. These are all things that will make your PowerShell feel very comfortable and nice, especially if you are a Git user, because you'll get nice things like this, no pun intended. Um, but uh, folks have been saying that they've been challenged in getting that stuff set up. So I thought I would take a moment and we'll do it from scratch. That way that you don't get lost. Now, the TLDR is go out there and Google for Hanselman Pretty Prompt. I've got a blog post that sets you up on that. You can also look at the documentation. Uh, there is one called Setting Up Powerline in Windows Terminal. You can find that at the Microsoft Docs. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow those, but we're going to talk about the issues that you might have and the things that you might bump into while you do that. Now, I'm going to be using PowerShell, but you could also use PowerShell Core. Now, if you go and go to the Start menu and just run PowerShell, you might get something that looks like this. I'm using Control Scroll. I'm holding down the Control button and scrolling to make the fonts bigger. But I would recommend that you get the Windows Terminal. You can get the Windows Terminal by searching for Terminal in the Windows Store. Uh, or you can go and Google uh, for Windows Terminal and you will get either a blog post about the Windows Terminal or you can find the GitHub on the Microsoft Windows Terminal and there will include a releases page. So there's lots of different ways for you to get the terminal, but I would encourage you to use it uh, and get it from the Windows, the Microsoft Windows Store because it gets automatically updated all the time. Okay, so step one, get the Windows terminal. That will be different than PowerShell. It's important to point that out. If I run the Windows terminal, it looks like this. Terminal is not a shell. I have lots of shells, including the original command prompt in Windows. I have PowerShell Core. I'm using Windows PowerShell as well as Ubuntu and other things that we'll talk about in other videos. But I'm just pointing out that the terminal gives you the tabs, gives you copy paste, it gives you new fonts. It doesn't have anything to do with PowerShell. PowerShell is one of the shells you can use within the terminal. So step one, get the Windows terminal. Step two, we're using PowerShell. This is the default PowerShell prompt. You can see it shows my path. It's not really interesting or fun. Uh, nothing interesting going on there. So what you want to do is get a PowerLine compatible font. Okay. And in order to do that, you're going to want to go and get, I recommend Cascadia code. Cascadia code can be downloaded. Also, parts of it come with the Windows Terminal, but we want a very specific version of it. I'm going to open up this zip file here. And inside this zip file are going to be a couple of different kinds of fonts. The ones we care about are the PL fonts. There's Cascadia Code PL and Cascadia Mono PL. Cascadia Mono uh, will not, by its fault, by default, include uh, the uh, PowerLine fonts that we want. So what you're going to want to do then is go to your Windows and type C colon Windows and the folder is called Fonts. And what you can do is you can take out the fonts that you want out of that zip file. You might need to unzip that first. So I'm going to unzip it by right dragging, I'm using the right mouse, right mouse button, and I'm going to say extract. I'm going to drop that right into this location here. Show extracted files when complete. Here they are. All right. I'm going to grab some fonts. Cascadia Mono. You can also right click on them and say install. I'm getting a prompt here installing those fonts. Okay, and now they're there. 
and you can confirm that the fonts you want are there if you see them and they say PL. They've got to say PL, otherwise you won't have the glyphs, the power line glyphs that you want. So, step one, get the Windows terminal. Step two, get the power line, get a power line font. Now, if I click here in the Windows terminal and go to settings, I can change my font. I'm going to leave it like this for a second because I'm going to cause a bug that I want you to see. And then we'll fix that bug by changing the font. Following the instructions, the next thing we're going to do is install two modules. One called Posh Git that helps you with your Git prompt and one called Oh My Posh that sets up your prompt very nicely. So then if we try to run these, we'll see if we get any errors. I'm going to install this module Posh Git. You're going to want to say yes to any prompts that happen. Here you're seeing you're installing from an untrusted repository. You're going to, as long as it's the PS Gallery, it's probably okay. I'm going to say yes or yes to all. Okay, installing those modules puts them on your machine, but they don't set things up in actual PowerShell uh, to be used. They are not imported, they're simply installed. Um, now, uh, if you're using PowerShell Core, there's one additional line. Now it says, in your PowerShell profile, add these lines to the end of the file. Okay, what I typically recommend people do is they type notepad dollar sign profile. That can be a little confusing. I'm just going to point out, if you say echo profile, it's going to give you a path. That path is where your PowerShell profile either is or should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my mouse. And I'm going to select the path right up to here. Then I can either right click or I can hit control C. I'm going to type start, paste, enter. Okay. And now I'm in that location. There's a profile here. You may not have one. Okay. So if I said notepad profile, you may see something or you may not. It may be empty. You may get a warning and says this doesn't exist. You need to make that file or let Notepad make that file if it doesn't already exist. Then we're just going to copy these three lines into our Notepad and hit Save. All right. We're going to close that. That is now in this file. Now I'm going to open up another tab here. And you notice I'm getting an error. The error is, I can't run this script. This script cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled. That's a big, scary error. What you can do is you can go and run PowerShell or run the Windows Terminal as administrator. So that would mean going here, typing PowerShell, and then clicking Run as Administrator, or right-clicking and saying Run as Administrator. You get that prompt. And then you can say set-execution policy. And then there's some choices here. Signed means digitally signed. Unfortunately, the easiest thing to do to get past this is to say unrestricted. When you're doing that, though, you're basically saying that uh, it's okay for you to run any kind of scripts at all. If your IT department doesn't allow you to do that, you can then switch it to signed and then go off and Google how to run signed PowerShell scripts. But we're basically saying it's okay to run PS1 files or PowerShell scripts. That will allow us to run the profile that we just wrote. Now, when I run the prompt, look at that. I'm getting stuff. I'm getting this little prompt. You know you got it right if you get this prompt. Now, notice I'm a little surprised, actually, that this is showing correctly because I thought the font would be wrong. And it looks like if I say settings on my machine, I had set, this is the settings for your terminal, I had set under defaults font face Cascadia code PL. I'm going to change that to just Cascadia code. Look what happens right here. If you see these squares, 
that means you're using a font that doesn't have the power line glyphs. Okay, so let's see what that looks like again. I'm going to close VS Code. I click here. I click Settings. I'm now inside Visual Studio Code or Notepad or whatever. It doesn't matter. And this is your settings.json for your terminal. The best way to get things working for everyone, for everything, is to make a section after profiles called defaults. It should look like this. Okay, and I'm just going to change Cascadia code to Cascadia code PL for power line. This is the section that you need. I'm going to hit save. Now, if you want, you can go and find PowerShell down in here and manually add the font here. So, for example, I've set it to Cascadia Mono just for PowerShell, and you see that the squares look th are there. If I get rid of that line and hit save, we're back to the correct glyphs because the default uses PowerLine. Now, you don't have to use Cascadia code. You can use any PowerLine font if it makes you happy, but that's uh, the easiest one, and it's uh, also included with uh, Terminal, and it's always updated, so you can go get a fresh one up on GitHub. Now I'll go into a git folder to see if it actually works, and it does. That is that relationship between posh git and oh my posh. Again, if I go back to notepad and look at this, we have a couple things going on here. Posh git giving us functions in order to ask questions of our current git. Oh my posh setting up this lovely prompt here and then set theme paradox that's an interesting one well we can actually go and dig in if we want to and download different uh, themes in fact if we search for oh my posh themes this prompt theming engine that we're using has lots of other themes that you can use so you can go through this and try other ones if they make you happy it doesn't have to look like mine. Now, if I get a complaint here where it says this prompt doesn't exist, it's telling me the path that it should be. So I can go and copy that into the clipboard, hit start, paste it in. And then look, I can see the choices. There we go. I've got a number of themes here. Maybe I spelled that one wrong. Look at that. Bunch of choices for themes. Looks like that one's not working well. So I learned something there myself because I tried a theme and I didn't get what I wanted. But of course, I can change those things. The ones that I like to use is called Paradox. And all right, now I've got that theme. These themes are all changeable. Okay. So that's how you get a cool prompt. Let's go ahead and review. I'll just make a little notepad here so we can talk about that get the Windows terminal from the store, uh, get a power line font. I like Cascadia code PL. Make sure it's installed. Then edit your settings.json in the terminal. Set a defaults section. Let's look at what that looks like. Okay looks nice and then set a theme I like paradox there's lots of themes that are included with oh my posh all right and then add these lines to your profile and we saw that your profile exists in a certain place and your profile has to exist Notepad profile. Some people might get an error if your profile doesn't exist. That's okay. Make one. Put some lines in it. Set the theme to whatever makes you happy. All right. 
Again, all of these instructions are on my blog, and they have now been added to the Microsoft documentation. So hopefully that'll get you started on making a cool prompt in, uh, in Windows. Please do subscribe to my channel. I'm working very hard to make fun things for you to watch and learn with. And if you have any ideas for other videos that I can make, please let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot.